Hello everyone and thank you for joining today's webinar entitled Benefits and Challenges of Outer Rotor PM Generators in Wind Power. My name is Ali Vakilian and I'm an electrical motor design expert at EMWorks. EMWorks is a leading provider of electromagnetic simulation software for electrical and electronic design from DC to millimeter wave frequencies. Our products are embedded in the most popular CAD platforms, namely SOLIDWORKS and Inventor. EMWorks products cover a wide range of applications ranging from electric motors, generators, transformers, and power electronics at the low frequency to antennas and various wireless circuits and components at the high frequency. We provide four main products. Motor Wizard is a template-based motor design tool that helps to design the motors without need to CAD drawing. With defining geometry parameters, you will have initial design outputs and the full CAD model for further analysis. Beside Motor Wizard, EMWorks 2D offers 2D finite element simulation environment with various analysis options like magnetostatic and transient simulation, motion coupling, thermal coupling, eccentricity simulation, and many other simulation options. EMS as the 3D simulation product that covers many applications like electromotors, insulators, cables, circuit breakers, and transformers. The last product is HFWorks, which is used to electromagnetic simulation of RF, microfield, and high-frequency devices. It covers applications like antennas, filters, connectors, and etc. If you need any further information, you can visit our website, www.imworks.com. I request all the participants to please feel free to ask their questions using the chat box option, and we will address all the questions at the end of the presentation. Now let's have a look on agenda. In today's webinar, we will cover various aspects of extracting electrical power from wind energy. We will review PMSM topologies to know the options that we have in our designs. Then we will also talk about why we chose outer rotor and why we chose surface mounted topology for this industrial project. In this webinar, we will focus on the practical aspects of generator design for prototyping. In the next part, we will see the simulation results of a practical wind generator design, a live preview of motor wizard software environment will be shown to see the options and capabilities of this software. In the last part, we will have a conclusion and answer to the questions. Wind turbines are an important source of renewable energy that convert the kinetic energy of the wind into electrical energy. The process involves a rotor with blades which can be either horizontal or vertical that capture the wind's energy and turn a shaft that connected to the generator. The selection of the turbine design and the sizes depends on the several factors, including the speed and time duration of the wind and financial aspects. Wind turbines have many advantages over traditional sources of energy as they emit no greenhouse gases or air pollutants and have minimal environmental impacts. Large-scale turbines typically rotate at 20 rpm, while domestic-sized turbines tend to revolve at roughly 400 rpm. 
in most large scale turbines, the low speed shaft is connected to a gearbox that increases the rotational speed up to almost 3000 RPM. Beside the mentioned subjects, fixed speed or varying speed of the generator depends on a standalone system or grid connected system too. For optimal choice of the generator type and the blade type, we have to consider all the mentioned aspects. PMSMs are highly efficient and power dense, making them an ideal choice for new applications. They are smaller than comparable models without sacrificing performance and offer reliable and effective operation. PMSM motors can be designed with various topologies. The selection of the optimal PMSM topology depends on a variety of factors, including the specific application requirements, performance objectives, and available resources. Key design consideration includes the positioning of the rotor, being inner rotor or outer rotor, the placement of the magnets, surface mountain magnets or interior pyramid magnets, and the orientation of the flux paths as they can be axial flux or radial flux. Here we can see several PMSM topologies this is the inner rotor permanent magnet machine with surface mounted permanent magnets. This topology is most used topology in, in, this, in the industry, but for high pole numbers of the magnets, but as we don't need much back iron in the rotor, the used active material in the rotor will be low. On the other hand, this is the surface mounted outer rotor topology that we are talking about in this webinar. As we increase the diameter of the rotor, we can have more pole pairs and open slots of the stator will make the winding easier. Instead of surface mounted permanent magnet, we can have interior permanent magnet topologies that can have many subtopologies like this V-shape type, spoke type, barrier type, and etc. In interior permanent magnet type, as the inductance of the D-axis is not equal to the Q-axis, we will have reluctance torque too. Furthermore, inserting the interior permanent magnet is harder to assemble the surface permanent magnets. All of the mentioned topologies are radial flux topologies and in other hand we can have the axial flux machine that the flux will go in the axial path and the current will conduct in the radial plane. I strongly recommend to see two other webinars that are related to this subject. One of them is design and optimization of a PMSM for wind turbine and the other is optimization electric motors performance using asymmetric design method. These webinars have many useful information about optimization and usage of PMSM in, in wind turbines. Now let's see why we chose outer rotor and why we chose surface mounted PM topology for this industrial project. Some of the advantages of this topology are we can directly couple the blades to the outer rotor without any additional coupling. The other advantage is higher diameter of the rotor will allow us to have 
more pole pairs and this will eliminate the need of the gearbox as we mentioned more active steel material will be used in the rotor and the stator as we have the outer rotor and the last one is easier assembly of surface mounted magnets in comparison with interior permanent magnets on the other hand using the outer rotor machine will have some disadvantages too we can mention more difficult designing for housing and bearing and moving outer parts make safety and protection design harder in this webinar we will focus on the practical design consideration in the previous webinars we cover the analytical and optimization aspects of the design in this project because it was an industrial prototyping it was very important to consider the financial aspects so for example instead of designing a shape of the magnet we had to choose the available magnets on the market the rated output power of the generator was 5.5 kilowatts and the rated turbine speed was 300 rpm the desired frequency and voltage at the 300 rpm was 50 hertz and 380 volts and due to the turbine blades we had another limit about the outer diameter so our outer diameter should be less than 300 millimeters now let's follow the design workflow as we had 300 rpms we need to have 20 poles and for 20 poles machine due to the slot pole combination we choose 24 slots for the stator so the slot and pole combination should be 20 24 slots and 20 magnets as you can see this slot pole combination has the maximum winding factor we have electromagnetic torque formula that shows that the torque is depend on the magnetic loading electrical loading and the dimensions of the machine due to the rated output power and speed we know that the torque will be 17.5 newton meters and as we have the torque and assume d as 300 millimeters and the nominal values for magnetic and electrical loading we will have the axial length as 92 millimeters but as we mentioned we have to choose standard sizes for magnets in this project because it was just one set prototype so the nearest available magnet size in the market was the NDFEB grade N35 and the size was 30 millimeters width and 50 millimeter length. 30 millimeter width will help us to have 20 poles in the mentioned diameter and 50 millimeter length will force us to choose 100 millimeter axial length for the machine in prototyping it's very important to focus on the materials that we can find in the market as we have the rated voltage and the geometry size we can calculate the number of turns in our coils and when we have number of turns we can calculate the resistance of the winding too. We will have a design 
with the calculated values and then we will choose the geometry a little bit to be more cost effective. For example, instead of arc magnets, we will choose rectangle magnets to be attached to the outer rotor. In this case, we don't have to buy or mold or find the, this specific arc for the magnets. So we can just use re a standard rectangle magnets. Now let's have a look on the motor wizard simulation that will help us to have a CAD model and initial results for our design. I will have a live preview on how to simulate the design variables and geometry on the motor wizard and then we will have a look on the results. This is the motor wizard environment. If you are not expert in CAD drawing, I strongly recommend to use the motor wizard to draw the geometries of the motors and generators. In the motor wizard environment, you can see we will have some predefined types of the machines and and the software developers are adding more and more types of the machines here. We will choose the brushless permanent magnet and in the rated parameters we will input the rated values that we have. The rated current is 8.5 amperes, the rated voltage is 380 volts with 300 rpm speed. The desired rated power is 5.5 kilowatts and the operating temperature is 75 degree. As we calculated, we will choose the 24 for number of slots and 24 number of poles. We have to complete the sizes and the characteristics of the stator, rotor and winding two that we will follow it together. In the stator setting we can choose the inner or outer stator because we have an outer rotor we will choose the inner stator. For the slot type for the slide type we will choose rounded slots to have a better winding space. So I will choose a round slot you can see the shapes of slots by choosing other options too. When you choose the slot type, you can see the dimensions of the slot and the stator in the below window. To fill the sizes, you can have a preview image on the sizes that you are giving the software. So the inner diameter of the stator is D2 and D1 is the outer diameter the stator. I will choose 248 millimeters for the outer diameter and 80 millimeter for the inner diameter. We can easily change these values later to see the effect on the results and the effects on the magnetic field distribution. We calculated the axial length as 100 millimeters to, to, to be able to use a standard magnets and, and the stacking factor will be considered as units. Now let's fill the slot properties to, to see what these dimensions means. We can see the preview of the slot dimensions. So we fill all the values with initial sizes and if we need to change them we can change and see the effect on the results we have two millimeters as a two gap length three millimeters as a two gap width and four millimeter for two opening width w3 and w4 will show us the 
a slot width and or we can change the tooth width with these numbers d2 shows the slot body height and it will change the area of the slot for the winding if we choose higher number we will have lower back iron here and if we choose and if we choose a smaller body height we will have less area for the winding in the last part we have to choose material properties for the stator material i choose m33 for the stator material as it was the default value in the motor wizard we should do the same for sizes in the rotor too first we have to choose the type of the magnet in the rotor we will have surface mounted with a radial magnet here these sizes are about the rotor geometry and these values are for magnet size our limit of the outer diameter of the rotor was 300 millimeters so we will use all the available space here and the inner diameter should be a little higher than the stator outer diameter we consider the air gap as a one millimeter for each side the lengths of the stator and rotor are the same and the stacking factor will be considered as a unit here too. The magnet size will be 5 mm for thickness as we choose the available magnet on the market and the magnet angle will be 15 degrees to have almost the same size with the chosen magnet. As we have a little fillet and the magnet and offset we will choose 0.1 for fillet radius and half of the millimeter for offset rotor core material is chosen the same with the stator m90 m36 magnetic steel and the shaft material is a stainless steel for the magnet we choose the for the magnet material, let's see the options that Motor Wizard have for the material. In the top of the window, we can see the used materials here. And if we want to choose another material, we can find it in the default materials menu. We have the air. We can choose different materials here as we want to select a permanent magnets so we open the permanent magnets material we can choose all nickel ceramic ndfeb and subarium cobalt if we open the ndfeb we can choose the grade of the magnet too by clicking on the material we have to select the apply material to apply the changes now that we set the stator and the rotor values we have to go to the winding part and choose the winding characteristics i will use the automatic layout method to use the default values of the software and of course because this pole combination have only concentrated option for the winding I will choose the concentrated for winding type and we can have single layer or double layer for the winding and in this machine we have the double layer winding the type of the connection can be a star or delta we have the star type and as we calculated we have 56 or 55 turns per coil when we are using the analytical model or analytical calculation always we have some errors due to inaccuracy in the material characteristics in the magnet characteristics 
and magnet strings so we have to change all of these values to achieve the optimal results we can also define the insulation thickness the wire size and the values of the slot liners and coil insulations after defining all these parts we have to click on generate to generate the geometry of the motor we can export this geometry to them em2d or ems software to solve with finite element method but in the motor wizard itself we have a simulation option that can show us the back emf the losses and the values that we define for the analysis it's very fast and very useful to have a simulation in the motor result first to to have the initial results before moving to other analysis in the simulation tab we can choose which type of simulation we need unload simulation dq inductances inductances no load back emf no load cogging torque and performance analysis we can have each one of them for example we can have the cogging torque or field distribution or we can simulate the output current, total torque, total torque ripple, electromagnetic power, and back EMF on load. We have several options to simulate and get the results on the motor wizard itself before moving on to the other simulations. Now let's see the initial results that we got from the motor wizard simulation. Here we can see the cogging torque as we move the rotor without any excitation and the field distribution on the stator and rotor. As we can see we don't have saturation in the rotor back iron and the stator back iron but we have some saturation on the teeth so we have to consider again if we have to choose the another magnet type or increase the width of the teeth that's why i mentioned that it's very useful to have the result simulation on the initial design here we can see the back emf or induced voltage in the phases and the total core loss on the machine as we know because the rotor back iron rotates with the magnets it won't see any varying field so the rotor core loss is very low and the most part of the core loss is dedicated to the stator core loss that's why we can choose the solid rotor material instead of using laminations after changing the sizes and optimizing the parameters the prototype was built and here we can see these are the slots for magnet to be attached it is the outer rotor and it is a solid material instead of using the lamination it, it will reduce the production cost a lot these are the grooves to hold the magnets and this is the bearing inside the rotor to hold the rotating parts with the stator that's why we mentioned that bearing design is a little bit complicated in comparison with the inner rotor machines these are the laminations of the stator that producted with the laser cut as we saw we have noticeable amount of cogging torque we have to use the sq angle to 
eliminate the cogging torque so first we have to set the laminations on the shaft and then we will set the skew angle with the structure that is rotating on the top of the laminations the skew angle that is selected is three degrees because we have to select the skew angle equal to the 360 degrees divided by LCM of the number of slots and number of the poles. This skew angle will minimize the cogging torque produced by the magnet interaction with the slots and the teeth of the stator. And finally, to have a view of the built motor, you can see how the outer rotor generator works. It is the initial test with connected lamps, but the rotor should be connected to the blades to rotate continuously and generate power. Before moving on to the conclusion, I want to mention some additional practical clues for machine design. As we had permanent magnet on the rotor, so we choose solid rotor material for the rotor back iron and it will reduce the manufacturing cost drastically. The other experience that I want to share with you is in prototyping the lamination manufacturing is much more cost effective if you choose laser cut as we are just prototyping we are not able to use heavy punching machines so we have to use a wire cut or laser cut the laminations and wire cut is a little bit more accurate in lamination manufacturing but has higher cost if we use laser cut with high temperature laser the quality of laminations will be acceptable for selecting the magnet material and size selection i mentioned that if we choose a standard magnet size that is available on the market the production cost of the prototype is reduced a lot and about the material of the magnet we know that ceramic magnets are more affordable but they have lower magnetic strengths so for high performance high power density machines the NDFEB series are suggested remember always the more powerful magnet won't lead us to the more efficient motor as we saw when we choose the N42 magnet series the laminations of the stator have some saturations on the teeth so we had to reduce the magnet size or use the lower grade of the NDFEV magnet about the winding fill factor, most of the rules of the TOMS will tell us we can have the fill factor between 40% to almost 80%. In this prototype, with hand winding, we reach the fill factor about 70%. So 70% is available on hand winding. The other experiment that we conducted on this machine was thermal test. As we know the temperature of the winding shouldn't reach its limits and the limit depends on the winding insulation. Usually it should be limited below 140 or 130 degrees and the temperature of the machine shouldn't reach 80 degrees we can conduct thermal analysis on the machine but in thermal analysis 
we have to precisely model the insulators and windings and production tolerances and we decided to have experimental results on the winding temperature in this design with this fill factor the winding could have 5.5 ampere per square millimeter before reaching its critical temperature in natural cooling but when we use a fan in this hollow area to cool down the stator the current density could reach 7 amperes per square millimeter before the winding heating up these are the practical experiments that i wanted to share with you and to have a conclusion we designed a outer rotor permanent maglet generator for wind turbine using the initial analytical formulas and then we simulated the geometry with motor wizard using motor result helped us to have the cad model and we performed the changes and optimization in EM work to the product to get the best results. The prototype of the machine have shown in the presentation and and a live motor wizard using shown in the presentation too. You can ask your questions in the chat box and we will address all of them. Thank you again for joining today's webinar. Have a good time.